And I think a lot of people are now starting to look at courses as like multi-level marketing almost, like almost a scheme. You get upsold into the course and then you get into the course and you get upsold into the mastermind and then you get into the math, like you're never done. It's starting to give like ick vibes, right? So Instagram for me was... It's time to unveil one of my favorite fake gurus with a series called Fake Gurus. I just gave a guest lecture last week at University of Texas for a class on entrepreneur. Seeing other people use Instagram for their business motivated me to also start to use Instagram to save. I'm going to show you how to get your first five customers in 10 steps. I'm going to share with you the disadvantages of owning your own online business. Do so you have an Instagram account which you think is dying? It's all Before there was anything called the internet, if you were in a developing or underdeveloped country and wanted to know about a product, you will rely on word of mouth recommendations from your friends, family or neighbors. You will also visit local shops and markets to compare prices and quality and you will have limited access to information and choices and you will trust that the sellers who had a good reputation in your community will deliver a good product. Now, if you were in a developed country and you wanted to know about a product, you will call the company and request a brochure to be sent to you by post. You will also watch TV or listen to the radio for more information on products. But now, in our current time, you do not even need to go out and seek information because the information will come to you, sometimes aggressively in the form of emails, ads, pop-ups, and the most popular form, social selling. To understand social selling is to take it back to a guy that we all know as Mark. Now picture this, a Harvard student named Mark Zuckerberg. On February 4th, 2004, he launched a social media website with a simple goal, to connect Harvard students. That website, Facebook. Little did he know that it would evolve into one of the most influential social media platforms in history. And two years later, after Facebook's launch in 2006, Mark introduced a groundbreaking service, Facebook Ads. Suddenly, brands and businesses had a new playground. They will create a page, target ads, and engage users based on their interests and behaviors. It was a massive shift in the marketing and the business world. It was a completely new way of advertising online that made marketers part of the everyday lives of their customers. As long as you had a telephone, you will stay in front of your customers by running ads on them based on their interests and things that they were doing online and their behaviors. But here's the thing. Even though Facebook ads was originally targeted at big corporations, everyday people used it to carve out their own space, but with a twist. This is where we saw the era of personal brands. Individuals, entrepreneurs, artists, influencers, coaches, harnessed platforms like Instagram and Facebook using the same concept of Facebook ads. Here's what I mean. They became their own mini companies, curating content, building communities, and selling directly to other regular people without sometimes paying for ads. Suddenly, you didn't need a fancy office or a corporate logo to participate. You could be a solopreneur, a side hustler, or you, should, you could just be passionate about something. All you needed to know to do was how to create content because social media leveled the playing field. It was free to open an account and do all of this stuff and target other regular people just by content. Your reputation wasn't confined to your local community or your local country. You could reach continents just by content and everybody wanted in on it. So Instagram for me was when I started using Instagram, it was, I was inspired by every other person that used or that uses Instagram because it seemed like a very beautiful platform. You see very nice, interesting pictures. You would want to interact with people, talk to people you usually or normally would not talk to physically or 
you might not have the opportunity to see as often as you see their post on IG. At that time, IG wasn't really about selling. It was majorly about, you know, putting stuff out there, getting people, um, making people aware of you and just sharing your interests. To me, I was using Instagram to share my interests. And then to my brand, Instagram is definitely the go-to place to let people be aware of what we're doing part-time. So I was inspired by every other person on Instagram because I I was seeing things that were eye-catchy, interesting, and I wanted to do the same. So that was the first stop. And then for my brand, it's the fact that there are so many interesting and wonderful people on Instagram. And the best way to reach them is to create content that resonate with them. And pretty much it. And just like what happens when something is in high demand, we started to see a super peak. If I ask 100 digital businesses the date they started selling online, I can almost guarantee you that 90 of them will say the year 2020 or after. Matter of fact, let me ask some that I know. What year did you start selling either a product or your expertise on social media? Hi, I. So to answer your question, I started selling on Instagram in 2019, um, November precisely. The year 2020. So 2020, and I would also say there was an increase in social selling in 2020. I started selling my expertise as a digital product um, on social media in the year 2020. Before 2020 and C19, like many said, social media was once considered a pastime for most people. But when we were all locked up in the house with nothing to do, it became a necessity. Everyone was online. And not only that, everyone was hungry for a change. Would you say 2020 was the peak of social selling and why? Yes, I would say that 2020 was the peak of social selling. And the reason why I said this was because before 2020, which was a year of COVID, um, so many people had their reservations about shopping online. Myself, I didn't even know much about shopping online. So aside having reservations, so many people also were not, you know, aware about shopping online. And so people would, you know, prefer to go to a brick and mortar store to shop for whatever thing they want to shop for because they could see what they want to buy, you know, and make decisions there. All right. But when the COVID came and everybody were actually forced to stay indoors, it's like when um, something happens to somebody, let's say um, my, my pinky finger is maybe the finger that I use the most, for example, and then I have an injury on my pink, on my pinky finger, right? I refuse to use these other fingers, I only use my pinky finger. And I have an injury on my pinky finger, then I have to look for an alternative. I have to look for a way, no matter the reservations I have about using my four other fingers or other, my, this is actually a very weird illustration, but yeah. <laughs> no matter the reservations I have about using my four other fingers, because I cannot use my pinky finger at the moment, I, I will be forced to actually now learn how to use my other fingers or any other of my fingers inside my pinky finger. And that was what I think happened with social selling in 2020. Okay, so um, a lot of buyers started to learn about, you know, how to buy on social media, how to buy using the internet, how to shop for things online, because a lot of businesses actually now, you know, utilize online a lot to do their marketing, to push things, because everybody were now on their phone. You cannot go outside, you are indoors all day, you can't go to work. You're just doing everything in your house so everybody were also on their phone i felt like the world wanted to end so people were, ins- were ensuring that they were keeping themselves up to date with what's going on around the world so everybody were active on their phones before 2020 yes people buy online but you know some people go to their place of work and before they would go and have a very long day they'll come back spend less time on their phones but in 2020 2021 a lot of people were on their phones, okay? And people started learning things because you get bored, staying home all day for like a whole year, morning to evening, morning to evening, 24 hours, you definitely get bored and you start looking for things that you want to start doing, right? So a lot of um, 
things also came up as well a lot of activities people started you know bringing up more in different income streams that we didn't really realize are things that could be possible right and so the buyers started learning and started trying to understand how they can use social media to make sure that they they get what they would need normally uh, by going to a brink and water store so started learning how to use social media or the internet to actually do the shopping a typical example was in 2020 i remember when i i think that was when i first started tiktok i don't know <laughs> Oh so <laughs> I used to see TikTok as a very difficult platform to use. Like I downloaded the app in 2020 and then I deleted it because I got into the app. I didn't know what I'm supposed to do. I didn't know how to use it. And now, four years later, I'm <laughs> I'm actually thinking about it. And I'm like, TikTok, because I can just open, put my video, put my text, and boom, I've made a post. Uh, I know how to navigate around TikTok. And so it was like <laughs> so it was really crazy. So 2020 was more like um an experimental year for a lot of buyers and even as well sellers right and this i think skyrocketed i remember in 2020 then i was learning a lot of skills because i was bored i was at home i was like oh how can i make money nobody is employing anybody at this time i need to start looking for ways to actually make money so i started to do research you know everywhere online a lot of courses i bought a lot of courses personally myself for self development and to be able to really understand how i can start earning online without necessarily like looking for a job because during the covid so many people were laid off people were not um, trying to get new people because even the staff that they have they're trying to ensure that they're able to you know pay them their salaries all right so because of that i personally started learning things online buying courses trying to understand certain things and that was actually what bettered my business in 2020 right and i just started to 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 um, build my business around that um the final illustration i'm going to give is um the students who just get into college so in your year one you're very excited you want to try a lot of things you want to see um different things you want to understand the whole area you want to know oh, what's going on here, what's going on here and then by year four or year five let's even say by year three you would not there are certain things that you did in year one that you will not do you may find them you just feel relaxed about them like oh, what's the uh, like you're already aware there's so many mistakes that you may not make there's so many other things you may not want to try not because not necessarily because they are not right or they are wrong it's because you've outgrown you've outgrown certain things like you're not you're not knowledgeable enough to understand that okay before i do this particular thing before i try this thing okay uh, i need to understand it or i need to study it or i need to do this thing and that's what's happening to the today buyer they are now um self-aware they are, they have access to a lot of information because they've been learning they've been grooming themselves over the years and so that 2020 was where a lot of people were doing experiments you know excited about this new thing like oh my god so we could actually do this so when someone comes up and say oh this is how to actually use tiktok imagine the time when somebody did it cause that to use TikTok? I'll be so excited to go and pay for it because I didn't understand how, how the hell TikTok works, you know. And so that was what was happening, and that really, you know, skyrocketed social selling in 2020. A lot of people who keyed into that actually made like a whole lot of money. Hello, yeah, my name is Dayo, and then I started my I started selling on social media in 2021. And if you ask me if 2020 was the peak of social selling, I will say yes, and two reasons why i'll say this first of all i remember in 2020 i was pregnant and it was covid year and i remember that every single thing that i needed that year for my prep for my delivery for everything i needed for my new baby as a then i put it online and i put it online because that was like that was like the right thing to do we weren't going we weren't going out much at some point we stopped going out and then we we're all scared of oh nobody wants to get covid and all of that so we are forced to buy online and i can remember vividly that almost all sellers then will tell you oh we're only going to and we can only shop online you can't come into the store the store is not open and all of that and i also remember that that year was a year that was so addicted to our phones personally for me i was so addicted to my phone so if there was anything i wanted to buy down to food the first place i'm going to is online the first place i'm going to is online to see where i can get these things to buy and then another reason why i feel that 2020 was the peak of social selling is that now in year 2024 i've heard a lot of people talk about their business and how their business skyrocketed and how their business became so big and they always go back to 2020 and say oh it started in 2020 when there was a lockdown and all of that and all of that and most of them keep pointing to year 2020 that's another reason why i feel that that was the peak of social selling and i feel that covid contributed so much to that and at that time because people were also stuck at home the only thing the only consolation they had was their phones and the online space you know and if you spend so much time on the online space and all you will find yourself buying whether impulse buying or things that you desperately need and for me 
that's how it went on all through the year 2020 for me. I would say that most of my purchases that I did, I would, I would say 90% of my purchases that I did in 2020 was done, you know, online. Social selling was done online. And I've not shopped that much online since after 2020 has passed. So to answer the second question, I wouldn't say 2020 was the peak of social selling. I think I would give that title to years in 2019, 2018, 17, like back then, because I, I feel or I think that it was easier then. Customers didn't demand much from you. So one thing I like to do both as a business owner and a marketing professional is that I like to dig into people's content from how they started when I'm trying to look for inspiration or try to motivate myself that, oh, I'll get to where they are soon. I should just keep going with my content. So I like to dig deep and see how they started. And what I've noticed, what I noticed is that it was a lot easier. Customers didn't want much from you. They just wanted you to post um, what you were selling and they'll be sold out on it. Just post a picture of your dress, your food, anything, and they'll be sold out, sold out for, they'll be sold out on it, rather. If anything, I think it got harder. 2020 was a blur. It was like a boring year. People, I think that was when people fully got into content. People fully started like evolving and demanding more from brands. And that was when brands had to be innovative into trying to like keep top of mind with their customers since they could not really um, ship things, they could not really deliver. So they had to find a way to make sure that they remain top of mind in top of mind with their customers. And um, for me, for my business, my food gifting business, um, I don't really remember much, to be honest. I don't remember how it was in 2020. I sell food. So obviously I wasn't, I don't think I was doing deliveries. And besides, um, I wasn't doing food gifting then in 2020. Um, I don't really re remember much of how it was. We were in lockdown, so there wasn't much food deliveries to do, to be honest. So I don't think that was a year for my business at all. My business kicked off in 2021, in the early days of 2021. That's when it kicked off. That's when we changed. We, in fact, changed the business model to food gifting before we we're just a regular brand. So we changed to food gifting, and that was when we picked since our um, launch in 2019. Yes, that was when we picked. Um, so mm -mm. 2020, I don't think it was, it was a social, um, it was a social selling peak at all. I don't think so, at least for me. I don't know about other brands. No, I don't think, I don't think that um, selling on social media peaked in 2020. I would argue that um, if there were a peak, for selling on social media it would be 2021 uh into early 2022 and my reason is because i believe what happened in 2020 was just the beginning that's when um, people needed skills and people could work remotely and people were exploring so many different options you know and as a result coaches appeared you know to provide solutions you know to those needs that people had at the time and the pandemic was the peak of it and then it spiraled into 2021 it was like a continuation but um mid 2022 when people started going back to um physical work modes and um the pandemic stopped in a sense that's that's when i think selling on social media peaked But just like the saying goes, every good thing must come to an end, especially if that good thing comes with a lot of controversy. Name a more iconic trio of guru busters. I'll wait. The rise of social selling coupled with its low barrier to entry, meaning anybody with a mobile phone could open a social media account and start selling. So that brought in a lot of interesting things that we will explore soon. And these three had a mission. They still have a mission. The mission is to unmask the charlatans, the fake gurus and online scams and expose their deceptive practices. And unmask they did. Because with every video they dropped, the level of skepticism and discernment increased. Now the guru busting coupled with audience sophistication and people getting back into real life now they had more information and not only that they were spending less time on the internet because they've gotten back to real life 
the C19 was, you know, getting over, we were getting over that. And the market was still saturated because people were still joining, opening accounts to start selling. So the audience were also experiencing fatigue. They were seeing a lot of the same things over and over and over again. I would say as a result of that, we saw an immense decline in social selling in 2020 to 2023, especially with personal brands. People who had personal brands and opened it on social media and started selling. But not only that, I feel like the introduction of Guru Boosting, people felt more comfortable into sharing their own experiences with that. And what I mean by that is we also started seeing an increase of people calling out coaches or influencers calling out brands, brands also calling out influencers, coaches calling out each other. It seemed like it was a jungle out there in the social media selling world. So why does this matter? Well, unlike traditional selling, which is transaction based, social media selling is based on relationships. Because if you look at the definition, it is the process of using social media tools to develop relationships with potential and existing customers. Relationships are based on trust. Relationships thrive on trust. And when the trust breaks or it fractures, the entire relationship ecosystem wobbles. Audiences on social media don't buy from strangers in a way. They buy from friends or at least people they trust. So when influencers, brands or coaches break that trust, whether through the false claims, the shady affiliations or the empty promises, that ripple effect was felt across the whole digital landscape. Suddenly, sales started declining for digital products. People who had podcasts, which were used as like a sales funnel for other products, those podcasts started ending. Some full-time influencers even went back to full-time employment. Other people had to pivot. And social proof, no matter how much reveals that you showed, it was being questioned whether it was true or people were falsifying numbers or falsifying social proof and audience engagement was also starting to decline. And what happens with that is when people stop engaging with your content, the algorithm stop pushing that same content. So having said all of that, and this same thing is still happening in 2024 as I make this video. So what is the future of social selling from 2024 and beyond? Does it mean that it's the end? Can we salvage it? Or should we all just hang it up? And I say all because I myself also sell on social media. I sell my expertise on social media, especially on Instagram. So I'm making this video for anybody who wants to sell on social media or you're already selling and you're feeling like, is it time for me to hang it up? Or you're not even selling, you've got a nine to five, but you have a desire to sell on social media. So the next chapter will be for you on exactly what you need to do. That is if you want to continue to sell or you want to get into social selling. So let's get into it. As we saw in the previous chapter, social selling saw a stumble or a fall. I think it was a fall. <laughs> and if you pay close attention, you will see that the decline wasn't just about numbers. It was also about hearts closing up. People who trusted other people felt like they were betrayed. Not everyone, some of them felt like they were betrayed. So hearts were closed up. People were not engaging anymore. They didn't seem really, really interested on things that they once did. So the once vibrant market seemed like it lost its pulse and it seemed like it was broken. But guess what? Trust can be rebuilt. Yes, trust was broken, but it can be rebuilt. However, it requires some real work. It requires transparency. It requires authenticity and a commitment to delivering real value. Because in this new digital jungle, the one that we're in right now in 2024, survival will depend on so many factors. They're not much, but survival will depend on who's doing these factors in a real way. And there are so many reports out there 
There's one from Pinterest and there are so many reports out there. If you Google it or you search it, you will see so many reports out there talking about the landscape of social selling in 2024 and what it will look like in the future. So what I'll do is I'm going to summarize some of the things that you need to do to ensure that you still stay, stay selling, you still stay building your community, right? There are some people who are going to give up anyway. But if you don't want to give up, here's what you need. You need authenticity and transparency. And here's what I mean. The many reports that I've said are based on audience analysis. These were research done with real people, sometimes mostly Gen Z, I'll say, and then millennials as well, to ask them what they want to see on social media. People are now craving content that feels like a FaceTime call with a friend. What I mean by that is they don't want the extreme edits no more. They don't want what looks like rehearsed. They want real content. Same thing that you would do if you were on a FaceTime call with a friend. That's what they want. As I'm recording this video, we saw a lady do 50 parts, 10 minutes long each on TikTok talking about who TF did she marry. There were no special edits. It was just her and the camera telling this compelling story. And I watched this lady go from, I think when I started seeing the series, she was about less than 10,000 followers, go to 1 point something million followers as I'm recording this, getting deals from different people, making the news. It was all authentic content. Sometimes she was recording in the dark, but it felt like somebody was having a FaceTime call with you, telling you about their story. That's what people are craving for. People don't also want to feel like they're being tricked into buying something. What I mean by that is, if you're going to sell to them, say straight away, I'm going to sell to them. If it was a sponsored post, tell them straight away that this is a sponsored post. Don't try to trick people into buying something that they feel they don't need or saying it in a way or doing it in a way meaning they just don't like that they want you to be transparent in fact it looks like from 2024 and beyond being transparent is a must it's a must have you have to have that in your business look at this as a shopkeeper who opens the curtains wide you need to see everything happening in their store, everything that's going on behind the scenes, how they pile the boxes, whatever they do. People want to see that. They want your business to be sort of like an open book for them. Now, another thing that's always been important and will continue to even be more important now is community. Your secret recipe for the success that you're looking for in social media will be built on community. If you notice, you will see that corporate brands on social media, they have ditched like the formal language. They are casual in their tone. They're always commenting on the other comments. It's like it's showing that a normal person is running this account. They're trying to build community more than anything else. That should be something that you want to focus on. So let me recap. You want to be honest. You want to be transparent. They just want you to be authentic, be natural. That's how you're going to survive. And I want to conclude this by saying that there are so many other things. There's so many other perspectives and so many other things that I could have covered on this topic. But I wanted to keep it short and keep it light as well because I felt like if I covered so many things, I'll be rambling and then it will be too much going on. And I want to shout out to my contributors in this product. A lot of people contributed in this project. I said product. A lot of people contributed in this project. And what I'll do is I'm going to link their socials in the description so you can support them, follow them. If you like what they do, support them, support their businesses. And as always, please like, comment, and share. And I'll see you on to the next one.